Okay, here's an important announcement because people are buying Geiger counters everywhere in the world. Okay, so here's the Gamma Scout in audible click mode and in BKRL mode, which is actually impulses per second. It basically adjusts the amount of impulses it gets for every second, basically on the fly, in real time. So let's see what we're getting. A lot of random fluctuations, obviously. What I'm now going to do is put a piece of Trinitite bomb glass in front of the Geiger Muller window. And we might be getting a few more impulses, but it's really hard to tell. The thing is that this trinitide was formed during the uh, first nuclear bomb test that went off in New Mexico. So it's basically molten desert sand. And it contains, for example, cesium-137, so it's a very good comparison product for mild contamination as it could occur in food for, from, for example, Fukushima as well. But now let's compare that to this thing here, which is a sodium iodide detector. It is a uh, scintillation crystal, which is basically in the head of the probe here, shielded with aluminum. That's why I had the beta shield on the Gamma Scout as well, to allow for a correct comparison. So let's turn on that device. You can see it's in the same position where the Gamma Scout was. We'll just put it here so it's in the exact same spot. And then we'll turn this on. You can see it's set to times 10. We can set it to times 1. This is CDB 700. If I set it to times one, it maxes out the scale, so we're obviously getting more than 500 counts per minute. Set it back to times 10. And you can see that in the exact same position, We're getting an incredible 2,000, maybe, yeah, around 2,000 counts per minute. Well, with the Gamma Scout, as I said, we had uh, counts per second, and we had around 0.5 counts per second all the time. So we had about 30 counts per minute. Well, here we're having 2,000 counts per minute. That's not because the radiation just increased, but because this device is much more sensitive. Now I'm going to place that thing, the little trinitite, into the probe here. And what you can see is, we get an actual reading that is significant. We're nearing 3,000 counts per minute with that. Switch that off again. And as I said, that is because this crystal is much more sensitive. And you can see the background radiation here is normal according to the Gamma Scout. It's just this crystal that is so sensitive. So, let's take a look at what that is. As I said, it's a sodium iodide doped with thallium uh, scintillation crystal. And this is actually a schematic of a well detector. You might have seen that in documentaries about Chernobyl, where they checked for food contamination. 
And that's exactly the way you do it. You have a scintillation crystal, but a much bigger one than mine. Mine is just really, really small. You have much more sensitive scintillation crystals there, about this size or even bigger. That's around the whole borehole where you can insert a small probe. Well, as I said, they come in different sizes. You can also get really, really big ones. And the bigger the crystal, the more sensitive it will be. So what you do for, to check for food contamination, like for example from Chernobyl, so when you want to check uh, mushrooms from the Bavarian forest, for example, you just dry them up first, which is important to remove any excess water. And then you insert them here into the borehole, into the well detector, and this scintillation crystal will allow you to detect if it is contaminated with anything. Also, Geiger counters cannot display a spectrum, so they cannot determine the energy of the gamma radiation that is in there. Well, these things can detect the, uh, the energy the gamma rays have, and the gamma radiation that is emitted from something is really specific for the isotope. So you can detect, oh, okay, this is radioactive, and it's not radioactive because of potassium-40, but it is radioactive because there's cesium-137 in there. This will be possible with a well detector type sodium iodide thallium crystal, a scintillation detector, with the appropriate uh, measuring device connected to it, which will cost about, depends on the size of the crystal, but new it will cost about $5,000 to $10,000. Depends. Depends on the size of the crystal, as I said. So basically the point I'm trying to make is, this thing is contaminated with fallout, that is similar to that stuff you get from a nuclear power plant, like from Fukushima, for example. But your Geiger counter will not measure anything on it. It will not be able to detect it. You need a very sensitive device to be able to detect this at all. So if you buy a Geiger counter and just measure, for example, sea fish from the Pacific, and you measure they are not radioactive at all, according to your Geiger counter, you will have a false sense of security. And that is worse than not knowing what is going on, because at least you will still be careful about, for example, fruit from the, food from the Pacific, instead of just thinking, oh, it's all good, my Gamma Scout or any other Geiger counter did not detect anything, anything, so it's safe. And this thing would not be safe to eat, for example. So, really, stop buying Geiger counters for the purpose of measuring tiny contaminations or for measuring contaminations in food. If you live in Europe, it's completely useless to invest in Geiger counters, but people on eBay are bidding like Ten times the price a new bank account costs for that is like, it is unlikely that you will even be able to measure an increase in background radiation here, and you will definitely not be able to detect any contamination in food because it will be too small. You will just, don't know, get a false sense of security, as I said. So basically, if you live in the west coast of the USA, or maybe in Korea, and of course in Japan, it is reasonable to invest in a Geiger counter. And it would even be better if you would um, distribute uh, the, the readings you get on the internet. So we might be able to set up a people's radiation monitoring network that would allow other people to see what the real radiation levels are in the world. And so we'd not have to rely on what the governments tell us they're getting, uh, probably giving us a false sense of security too. But if you live in Europe, really, 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 you don't need to buy a guy account. It's pretty much useless. So, yeah. That's, that's about that. Last but not least, here's a serious warning to people who buy iodine to prepare for the fallout and try to do an iodine blockage at home without any advice of a doctor or anything like that. Um, well, the thing is that it's basically an iodine overdose. To perform an iodine blockage of the thyroid, such as the people near Fukushima received, you typically receive tablets that contain a total of 50 milligrams. Keep in mind, milligrams of iodine. And iodine tablets and supplements, they usually contain 100 micrograms of iodine. So, to have an effective blockage of the, thi of the thyroid, it doesn't help at all if you take 10 of these tablets. You would have to take 500 of these supplement tablets in order to be able to perform uh, an appropriate t thyroid blockage. But, now here's the big but, if you just do this without any advice of a doctor or anything, the side effects of, thi of iodine overdose, just the normal side effects that everybody will suffer from, uh, brown discoloration of the mucous membrane, so all of your mouth might turn brown, 
uh, you will likely experience diarrhea and vomiting, which can lead to dehydration. And in severe cases of dehydration, that can lead to shock. So you might need to go to uh, get yourself treated in a hospital in worst cases. Um, in some cases with underlying thyroid conditions, that could be, for example, Hashimoto's uh, thyroiditis or a strumer and enlarged thyroid or an autonomy of the thyroid. And keep in mind that not all people who have a thyroid condition are actually aware of this. It is said that approximately 1% of the, of the people in the Western countries like the USA or Germany, Europe in general, are suspected to be suffering from Hashimoto's, but it will usually not show before they are like 40 or 50 years of age. But these people will be at risk for a very severe side effect of such a high iodine intake. As I said, just taking one pill or uh, ingesting table salt with iodine will not do anything. The thing is a massive overdose of 50 milligrams. That could do this. Um, it could trigger a thyreotoxic crisis or a thyroid storm as people also call it. That, in addition to the above symptoms, uh, goes with fever, heart arrhythmia, which can be very severe and even cause you to die of a heart attack if you have an underlying heart condition. You will likely be suffering from panic attacks due to the hyperthyroidism and eventually you will end up in a coma. The treatment of this usually requires hospitalization and you can either suppress the thyroid with medication and if that is not possible anymore sometimes the only way to treat this is to remove the thyroid surgically. You will have your organ, the thyroid, removed if they cannot treat it in another way. So you're really playing with, it, with your life if you just take iodine tablets without the advice of a doctor or anything. The thing is if you're near a nuclear power plant and uh, that power plant blows up. <laughs> Your life is at risk anyway. You're at severe risk of having cancer and stuff. So an iodine blockage of the thyroid is very reasonable because it will be, despite all the side effects here, it will still be less of a bad outcome than, than if you just let the, than if there's a large uptake of radioactive iodine to the thyroid. So, but if, if you live in Europe especially, taking iodine pills will totally be crazy. Seriously, you will put your life at risk while having no benefits at all from that. Seriously. People like in Korea or the west, of the west coast of the USA and of course in Japan, they should consider that and talk to their doctor if possible, uh, listen to what the government says, monitor radiation levels, especially for uh, radioactive iodine. But if you live in Europe, do not take them. Seriously, it will just it's just crazy to do that. Don't do it.